Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This video for Monday, October 24th, 2011 is sponsored by Realtick. All right, let's get right into the mix today. Markets are having a dramatic move to the upside. You can clearly see the type of move we've had over the last three weeks by looking at the 60-minute chart of the SPY. The SPY mirrors the S&P 500. It is the tracking ETF. Again, we were down at 107.50. We're now at 125.50, and that's in less than three weeks. You're talking about a 16%, 17% move in the markets off those lows in under three weeks. If we go to the intraday, you can see exactly we're having another nice update this is an intraday 10 minute chart on the SPY and sure enough you had a little bit of a gap up this morning not a big gap just a small gap but notice the gap gapped above the pivot high right here from Friday that's very significant also known as a river theory which is a proprietary technique developed here at InTheMoneyStocks.com and sure enough, it tells us that there's a chance that you're going to see further upside in the markets. In addition, when you couple the fact that the volume is non-existent today, that favors the upside. You're also talking about you know, a continual bias to the upside based on this theory or possibility that Europe is going to get a bailout here of some sort, that the EU is putting it together to recapitalize the banks and get themselves out of a big mess. That's just an overall positive bias. In addition, last night, uh, China reported PMI numbers, which showed growth. And also, let's not forget earnings. Earnings on stocks like Caterpillar were pretty positive here. If I punch in CAT, you can clearly see the stock is having a big day today, up $4.40. So those all combined equals a nice gap up above the high from Friday on the SPY. And again, that gives us a nice little river theory, which continues the move up. We are pulling back just a little bit off the 125.80 high here and below the 125.50 level, which was the previous high. Question is, can we get back below the 20 moving average at this point? And again, the 20 moving average is holding. You can see we hit the 20 here and bounced above it, and now we're hitting it again. If you take out that 50 moving, uh, excuse me, the 20 moving average, you may actually see a little bit of downside in this market uh, towards the afternoon session. It might pull in a little bit. As long as you stay above the 20, as far as I'm concerned, this market could go higher. All right, and again, it's monumental gains. There's no other way to look at it. Today actually is some POMO. There is POMO, which is permanent open, open market operations by the Federal Reserve, where they're going in and buying long-term treasuries, infusing money into institutions, which are then using it to push the markets up. That's, a, again, what we've seen. We saw that in 2010, and again, we're seeing it here in late 2011. All right, markets, again, nice little downtick here. We'll see if there's any sort of major selling. The only way you're going to get major selling in this market is if you have some sort of pop in volume. If the light volume continues, there's no way this market can really sell off. You'd have to see a bigger surge in volume, which we may be getting a little bit in this vicinity. You can see the volume candle here where we still have a couple minutes left, and it is growing, so we may see one of the bigger candles in volume since the lunch hour started around 1130. Nice little sell-off, though, again, off those highs, but markets, again, still up nicely. Dow is up 108 points. NASDAQ's up 57. S&P's up about 14. NASDAQ is leading the charge today on the back of uh, a very nice move up in Apple Computer. Apple up $12. You can see it's actually coming right in here just as the markets are seeing a little bit of, of red as well. But nonetheless, up 11 12 bucks on the day. Amazon's also having a nice pop. AMZN up almost $5 near the highs of the day. And, of course, if we go to a couple of the other big names out there, they're also having big big days. Google's up 7.5. And, uh, and again, let me just scan through. Intel's up 2%. Microsoft's up about half a percent. Cisco's up 1%. Dell's having a big day up almost 3%. And even IBM is up a little bit on the day up a buck 20. So again, those coupled are making the NASDAQ have the biggest day of all today. That's moving up. What I wanted to show you guys is the daily chart of the Qs because I think this is ultimately where we're going. See this little pivot top right here? It's a beautiful double top at 60 on the QQQ. My guess is we're only at this point about, what are we, about a buck fifty away at this point from that point. My guess is eventually you see that high pivot hit, and that will take us into that point of interest, all right? So, again, something just to monitor there, and uh, we'll follow it through and see exactly where it goes, all right? Let me just take a look here at the SPY on the daily chart as well, as well. We're inching into this first bottom green area of resistance. That's what we pierced today and are now pulling back a little bit off of. I still think the markets have a decent chance of getting through and going a little bit higher, but there's not that much more upside. Ultimately, the high end of the upside would yield approximately 127.50 on the SPY. And then at that point, you'd have to think the markets were due for a pretty solid pullback. All right. 
Let me just take a look at a couple other charts out there. Um, a couple of the weaker stocks out there. Exxon Mobil definitely on the weaker side here. The stock ran into the 50, uh, excuse me, the 200 moving average on Friday, and that's most likely why it's seeing a little profit taking. A monster up move into that 200. Now again, it's not down much. It's only down 14 cents, but considering the market's green across the board, that is showing us weakness. Chevron, on the other hand, is positive by a nice amount, up a dollar. I think Chevron's going here, guys. Double top, beautiful double top on the daily chart at around 110. If you want direct alerts, if you want swing trade alerts, exact trades of entries that I'm taking and exits that I'm taking myself, then you want to join the research center at InTheMoneyStocks.com. There's a seven-day free trial. Trial, seven day free trial for you at InTheMoneyStocks.com. You can try the research center, you can try the chat room, no obligation. Come check us out, make money, and ultimately succeed in trading. Join the elite, folks. We're creating the best elite group here at In The Money Stocks of anyone out there, including institutions, with the methodology, the proprietary techniques, everything you need to know to know every move before it happens in the market, up or down. Profit from it all. Again, that's what we've been doing this year, especially over the last couple months, making money on the upsides, on the downside, on the up again, down, up, down, up, down, and just continue to accumulate those profits. And that's the key, folks. You want to be able to make money in any market. All right. Let's scan through a couple other charts today. What else is having a big move? Uh, big moves today in solar stocks. First, solar is squeezing today, although it is pulling back a little bit off the highs. Still having a great day, up about 10%. And again, ran right into the 20 moving average, pierced it by a nice amount, and then pulled back here. Either way, that's a great move on the charts. And what we're seeing here, and this is something I wrote an article on the Rant and Rave blog about last week. Solar stocks, there was just so much negativity. Last week, there was an analyst that comes out and says there might be 40 more percent downside in solar stocks. Um, that's telling you a bottom is near. Anytime analysts come out and say stuff like that, folks, it's almost like the fear has reached the epitome of its level and it's going to see a reversal. In addition, you know, I've heard so much about margins on these solar stocks and the panels and this and that. It's all factored in at this point. First solar was down 70% off the highs before that call for, for another 40% down. At this point, you have to like the upside in the short term, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. FSLR up 10% on the day. Also, other stocks having great moves in the solar arena. SPWRA up a dollar and change to almost $10. That's over 10% gain there. Uh, in addition, a couple other ones that are having big moves today. LDK up 8%. And these have just been beaten down so much. Plus, you had a nice and spirit of bullish pattern right here developing for the LDK. So it'll be interesting to see if the solar stocks have more than a one-day pop today. But either way, they're catching the shorts off guard. First Solar has 20 million shorts in it. And ultimately, you have to think that only today, I mean, it's traded a total of... 3 million shares today, what is half of that short covering, so there's still you know, 18, 19 million left to cover. If they continue to push First Solar up over the next couple days, you'll see a major move up continuing there uh, in FSLR. And that's, again, it needs the market to stay strong if it's going to succeed, so the shorts continue to stay scared. Either way, very interesting in the solar stocks as it finally looks like a bottom could have been put in last week as I writ wrote an article on a bottom last week, and it turns out to be true. And again, if you want calls on this stuff, guys, take the seven-day free trial here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. It's a no-brainer to join the elite group here and start learning the methodology that makes people millionaires and billionaires. All right, uh, just scanning through if there's anything else of interest. For the most part, financials are hanging in there. J.P. Morgan's up about 3%. That's a good day. Um, J.P. Morgan chart, let me just take a look. What I think is interesting about J.P.M., it closed above the 50 on Friday and is confirming today, assuming it closes up here. If it doesn't confirm, I think the market may reverse uh, for the next few days. But as long as it confirms, you got to trust the market may be in a neutral to upside bias for the next couple days. All right. The other thing to just mention, everyone's waiting on this big announcement of some sort of major deal in Europe. Um, we initially heard it was going to be done this weekend. Then by Friday, it was saying next Wednesday. Now I'm hearing Thursday. They keep on stringing the market along, and right now that's working to keep the markets up and gaining, especially because the Federal Reserve keeps on propping the market up with POMO. As long as that continues, again, look for it to continue up to the SPY 200 moving average. That's right now the general vicinity that you got to believe the market's heading to in the short term. If we go back to the SPY again, you can clearly see it right here. We are running into some resistance areas here, but the 200 moving average, another day like today, and you're going to hit it essentially same thing on the cues as i showed before the, the double top would be a great level and i probably will be looking for shorts at that level but i'll keep you guys updated inside the research center so again take that seven day free trial all right guys take care let's make some money this afternoon i'll talk to you soon